Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to this interview here of Sela Quills at the International Book Fair in Algiers, where we shed light on the world of books with its variety of authors and genres. Today we have another distinguished guest. He holds a master's degree in English literature and civilization, and also has been working in education and international development since 2008, and he's currently the country director of the British Council in Algeria. Please welcome with me Mr. Hamza Kudri. Hello, sir, and welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. So, first of all, let's talk about the book here, Sand Roses, okay? And uh, according to, to the, uh, the book here, it's the events of the, uh, of the book here date back to 1930s, and it's a tale of uh, resistance, sisterhood, and uh, the, let's say, shameful uh, past of the French colonialism. So. What was the inspiration behind writing this book or this novel? Sure. Um, so, San Roses is a um, is a story that really brings to light, um, I think, a part of our history that we're not all very familiar with here in Algeria or anywhere else in the world. Um, and it was the inspiration was when I first you know, heard the podcast about this culture, um, and I went and did some research. Um, and I was really surprised to find that there was a time where um, the lead nail dancers were a huge part of the, the culture. They were also very well known, not just in Algeria, but also in Europe and abroad, uh, where people, you know, they would attract tourists and uh, journalists from all over the world. Um, and so, really, it's a story of, um, you know, so through the story, what I try to do is to uh, try to bring to life um, this culture through, um, you know, through characters that we can identify with, hopefully. Um, so, it's a story of two sisters uh, who want to be successful dancers who want to, uh, you know, to be famous or, you know, to want to collect dowry. Um, and then they find themselves in a city, you know, Busada used to be known as the city of joy, but, you know, because of the colonial presence, because of all the, the violence that's going on, because of all how, of all how they fall victims to um, robbery, they, it turns out to be sort of like a, a city of um, horrors as well. And so when they kill a French soldier in self-defense, they, and they try to hide the crime. They find themselves a little bit more and more in trouble until they go up in sort of like a, uh, in a clash against the colonial army. And sort of like that. that's why it's also a story of resistance. How does your uh, Algerian heritage influence your writing, especially as we uh, have witnessed, as I told you, uh, the writing of uh, your novel that talks about events that happened in Busada? Okay, so how does this, I mean, influence your writing more specifically? Well, I think really um, our our entire history and our culture, I think, is rich of a lot of stories and opportunities for us to be sharing with the world and sort of like to you know in the form of literature, but also other forms um, of art. Um, and I think with San Rose is what I try to do is to um, sort of zoom in on one specific and unique part of the, the history that, like I said, is very little known to us and to the rest of the world. Um, and so through this, you know, it is a, it is a historical thriller, thriller um, but really through the folds of the stories and the chapters, you know, we get to know a lot about the customs of Busada at the time. Um, you know, I went and did a lot of research even about the map and how sort of like, you know, the locals lived versus the dancers versus the, the French um, uh, colonial army. And so I tried to sort of bring all of that through, uh, through the characters that we see. Um, you see also a lot of, uh, you know, I try to um, integrate a lot of the cultural references, um, also a lot of the uh, lively incidents and parts of, you know, for example, um, Etienne Dini is a very famous painter uh, who lived in Busada and was able to capture a lot of the images around him. Um, through San Roses, I tried to sort of replicate that through another art artist, but I also tried to refer back to Etienne Dini because people were familiar with him at the time. Um, so these were one of the, the ways, well, a few of the ways that I tried to sort of uh, bring the Algerian heritage through uh, uh, through literature. Mm -hmm. So the book is in English and as uh, a not native speaker, so what challenges can you face when you write in English? Um, of course it's, you know, it's, it's never easy for anyone to write in a second language, but I think um, uh, what's really difficult, especially, is writing about a, for example, an Algerian culture. So all of the humor, the cultural references are very particularly um, difficult to translate. Um, so I think that was where the challenge came. So like, you know, how do I uh, get the message across? And how do I, for example, how do I get these characters that lived in Algeria in 1930s to speak in English, even in dialogue, um, without sounding like, you know, they're Americans or they're British, um, but also without 
having a, a reader lose the message, you know, whether they're Algerians or whether they're foreigners. Uh, so I think that was the big challenge. Um, I think what helped a lot is... Um, I'm sorry to inter yeah. interrupt you. So uh, how did you do to, to overcome these challenges? Yeah, I think I think really what helped is you know I've always been a, an avid reader and a, you know especially a reader of uh, historical fiction. So I, I think doing all of that reading and also writing practice um, through either, either through my work or you know for uh, for pleasure when I write, um, I think all of that practice gave me the chance to really hone my skill and um, sort of improve my ability to uh, sort of to, to you know to tell a really good story. But also I think I was lucky to have a lot of friends, you know, with Algerians or foreigners who were able, you know, who were generous enough to read it and provide feedback and sort of spot a lot of the inconsistencies and that was very supportive. This is your first, I mean, uh, published book, right? So, is there any specific process you're following? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think um, at the beginning, when especially when I had the idea for Sand Roses, I, you know, I played with the idea a lot in my head um, until I found the right sort of conflict, central conflict, and I found the right characters, and then I started to develop an outline. Um, and then I did a lot of research to sort of like just um, sort of develop it. There's a process that you call snowflake, um, or yeah, snowflake effect, which is basically you start with something small and you keep developing it until it becomes really large. So I went through versions of the outline until it, the, even the outline was really long. I think it was like 14 pages long. Um, and then when I started writing the chapters, I would also always refer to it and be able to sort of um, change around a little bit or add. So I, I wasn't really, really stuck to the outline. I was able to, you know, I was really flexible and dynamic with it. Um, but also I think what really helped is sticking to specific times and days because I'm always in sort of like in the mood and I'm always connected to the story and characters as opposed to, you know, just writing whenever I have the chance or I am in the mood. I was able to commit to a very specific routine, which was very helpful. You are holding the position of the country's director in British Council, of British Council in Algeria. Uh, how do you incorporate with literature, including author's work, in your teaching to enhance language learning and cultural awareness? That's a very good question, and I think um, teaching is a great way, um, you know, I think teaching and literature are really interactive because, you know, teaching is a great way for us to work with our youth and, you know, learners or either kids or adults um, to use storytelling as a form of, um, of learning but also of discovery. And so um, at the British Council, we celebrate writing in general. Uh, we help especially a lot of the youth to develop their communication skills, whether it's writing or speaking. Um, but also we use storytelling and, you know, we encourage a lot of youth to read so that they learn and then also to practice by writing um, a lot and so um, very very recently we had a competition for kids to put you know for a book um, for the international day of books um, to just put together you know whether drawings or summaries or stuff so well, that was one way for us to encourage the kids to uh, at, the, at the British Council to to really get more nice, interested and nice. connected with literature yeah. mm -hmm. so what are your thoughts on the importance of cultural exchange and understanding through language education and how does it fit into your teaching approach I mean as a previous teacher you told me before that you have been a teacher for a long time what are these thoughts so um, that, that is a very good question I think it's very relevant to today especially as you know Algeria we're you know we're seeing a lot more demand for English um, you know we've uh, we've seen the introduction of English at the primary level uh, I really I think English, any language opens doors, and English opens doors to a lot of academic and professional opportunities in Algeria and worldwide. Um, and so, I think it's really important for our youth to learn it. You know, either to be able to access resources. You know, for example, um, reading, or you know, even either, either culture. For example, watching movies, music, uh, but also for professional opportunities and academic uh, advancement. So, a lot of people who are able to do research. A lot of the research today is published in English. Um, I think a lot of opportunities, especially with an international organization, would uh, you know would require you to have a good level of English. So that's very, I think that's, today, I think it's almost a requirement for people to be speaking English for to be able to succeed um, professionally or So do you consider yourself like a good writer ah, based on this book? <laughs> I, I don't think I can say that about myself, but I mean, uh, I mean, so far, San Roses has received a lot of really positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's I, nice, actually. I, yes. Yeah. So, actually, I got an offer of publication thanks to participating in a in a prize, um, mm -hmm. and it was running up to so number three. So, I think that's a good sign. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been at Sila for a few days, and you know, there was a limited edition trying to try it for Sila, and it ran out in a few days. So, I think these are good signs. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, of course, it's, you know, there's always areas I, for improvement. I asked you this question. This question 
question, sorry. Uh, I mean, this might prompt you to, I mean, to move further. And probably you have, I mean, uh, you have any projects in the future for your writing career. Do you intend to, I mean, publish more books? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've always been, right, I, I can't think of a time since I think I was eight or nine when I wasn't really working on a story or a book somewhere. Um, so I think, you know, I will always be writing, you know, whether, you know, whether Sand Roses is successful or not, I think I'll always be writing something. Currently, mm -hmm. I'm working on a sequel for Sand Roses, um, set 20 years later, um, taking a few characters and moving them to Algiers in the 1950s mm -hmm. at the heart of the Battle of Algiers. So I think that was a really good setting for it. Mm -hmm. Grateful for the uh, insights. And before we wrap up, what advice could you give to the, uh, let's say, aspiring writers in Algeria uh, who want to pursue a career in literature, especially in English? Yeah, I think honestly, um, the best advice that helped me is you know, you know, practice makes perfect. So you know, through reading, but also writing. I think you know, if you read what you enjoy and mm, write, especially indeed. what you like reading, I think that's always helpful. Um, I said you know keeping a, a specific process, you know, respecting your own routine mm -hmm. as if it's an appointment with someone else. I think that was very helpful because you can always, you know, make more progress. Um, but really, I think uh, getting more people to read it and give feedback. Um, like I said, I participated in the Island Prize. And if anybody, you know, if any other youth are interested in participating, it's currently open now. They should look for the Island Prize. Um, and, you know, it's a chance for African writers who have not been published before to mm -hmm. get their voices heard and to get their, you know, to, to participate and maybe get a chance at getting published. Uh, mm -hmm. So I really advise people to go try it out. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. And thank you so much also, dear viewers, for watching our interview. And stay tuned to our channel, All24 News. Bye for now.